Hello to all my artsy friends. Pottery Barn has gorgeous decor, but it is so expensive. I was inspired by their black and white decor I saw, and I decided to make my own versions for way less money. So let's get started. I saw some great iron and metal looking decor, but to save money on these, we'll be using materials other than metal. Let's get started with this home sign. Now this is almost $100 and this will be our largest cost savings. So keep watching to see how little we paid for our own version. Dollar Tree sells $1 poster board. I thought I could get a very similar look to the Pottery Barn one by manipulating this black poster board in a way to form these letters. The first thing we're doing is marking one inch sections on the poster board and we're going to cut out those strips. I went with poster board instead of paper because I felt it would hold up better as a wall hanging and it's still malleable enough to do what we need it to do to get those curves. I've had a few people ask me for tips on using an X-Acto knife. I've been using X-Acto knives since design school, so I am pretty comfortable with them by now. There are different techniques for different materials, but these are things to keep in mind when it comes to poster board and straight lines. First, always start a project with a fresh blade. So I am left-handed and I'm holding down the ruler with my right hand. I instinctively note that my fingers are out of the way of the blade before I start a cut. And I'm holding that ruler really firmly so it won't slip. I always look for rulers that have cork on the back because that really does stabilize the ruler from shifting. I also make sure the cut went all the way through the paper before moving the ruler out of position. That way, if you have to go back and make the cut deeper, you won't have to reposition the ruler again. I'm using adhesive transfer tape for this because it is really sticky and so thin and lightweight that it won't add any thickness. I've had this roll for a long time. I remember it was on my art supplies list for one of my watercolor courses, and I think we used it to attach vellum as a protective sheet between our paintings before putting them away. But I found lots of uses for this type of adhesive tape. It's especially good for working with paper, so let me show you how it works. You carefully pull out how much you'll need and then trim it with scissors. This is much more delicate than regular double stick tape. It's also much stickier. Once you get it on the surface, it's on there really good and you can peel the brown paper backing right off. You want to be really gentle as you use your fingers to curve the letters. I kept repeating the same motion to help keep the curve that I wanted on the poster board. The M is basically a series of the same piece, which is straight with that little curved part at the top. I kept going along with the letters like this until I was happy with the look. Oh, and if there is a certain home decor store that you like and you want to see me make copies of their items, leave me a comment below. I also have a lot of room makeovers coming up, including a Pottery Barn inspired bedroom. Yes, I'm duping a whole room and I've done this before in another guest bedroom. 
and I will link that series here for you if you're curious. I really love sharing crafts and home DIYs so you can get lots of ideas to find your inner artist. Please consider subscribing if you like home decor inspiration and then you can be part of this uplifting and creative community here on Artsy Cupcake. Now I don't mind the white line on the front. I think it gives it a bit of dimension, but if that white edge bothers you, you could take a Sharpie and just color it in. For securing this to a wall, there are a couple ways you could do this by adding tabs under the letters and then using wall mount tape Or you could strategically place a few nails and have the tops of the letters sit right on top of the nails. Or you could attach a piece of string or fishing line with tape underneath the letters and hang it that way. Okay, let's take a look at the supplies we used. I already had the tape, and if you have double stick tape, that would work too. So all we really needed to buy for this project was the $1 piece of black poster board. And here is the comparison of mine to the Pottery Barn version. What do you guys think? To keep with this metal look of our dupes today, I saw these steel lanterns and I really liked the simple and elegant look of them. We'll be duping the small one and it is regularly $99. We'll be using these wooden dowels from Dollar Tree. These are different from the wooden skewers that I sometimes use on my projects. The dowels are quite a bit thicker. I used my hacksaw to cut a few pieces down. This should have been easier, but my husband used the saw for our recent Easy Closets pantry makeover. And part of that project was he had to cut metal with this saw. So the blade is really dull now. I definitely need to get a new blade this weekend. Let's give these a coat of flat black spray paint. I stuck them into a piece of styrofoam and when they dried, I flipped them around to get the other side. I found this ceramic dish in the Target dollar spot. It was originally white, but I had used it for another project, so that's why it's gold. Now I'll be painting it with that same flat black paint that we used on the wooden dowels. I also had this glass candle. You can find similar candles at Dollar Tree, and I thought this matched the Pottery Barn one really well. Something I love about black and white decor is how it can go with any style of decor, and it just looks timeless and chic. I also like how you can mix other colors with black and white decor, and it gives it a totally different look just depending on what colors you pair it with. I love this craft mat. I use it over my wood desk and it protects all my messy crafts from getting on that wood desk. I use Clorox wipes to get any paint off of that craft mat and it seems to clean it up really well. Now we have our base for the candle and black painted dowels. To secure everything together, you will want to use a tight hold glue like Starbond or E6000. But if you want a quick hold too, you can use a dot of hot glue in addition to the tight hold glue. That will help you not have to hold it in place as long because that hot glue will just kind of give it a quick hold. I pieced this together and then added a little gold and black paint mixed together for a touch of shine to this piece, which is supposed to look like metal. That shimmer really gives it that look. So here's the supply list. I don't usually count things like paint or paint brushes or hot glue because if you like to craft, 
those are probably things you already have in your craft stash. I had the candle, but if you did need to buy one, you could get it for a dollar at Dollar Tree. And here is the comparison of mine to the Pottery Barn one. I thought this rustic black vase with the simple eucalyptus leaves was really elegant, but the vase is $69 and just one branch of those leaves is almost $40. So this was the only glass vase I had that would kind of work. If I had a less bulbulous looking one, I probably would have used it, but we're going to make this one work. I started by using the flat black spray paint on the outside of the vase, and it took one or two coats. Okay, the handles were a bit of trial and error, but I'll share as I go along how I would have done things a little differently. I had this really sturdy piece of styrofoam that came with a piece of wooden furniture. So it is definitely more durable than just a regular piece of styrofoam. I cut it into handle shapes. Working with styrofoam is really messy. <laughs> I was worried when I spray painted these handles that the spray paint would disintegrate the styrofoam, and well, it kinda did. <laughs> they lost their smooth shape a little bit, so I would stick to hand painting the styrofoam if you're going to recreate this. Another thing I would have done is used this wood filler on the handles before attaching them to the vase. I did use E6000 to stick those on. You could use wood filler or joint compound to smooth these styrofoam handles out and then paint them. Right now it's looking like a little cauldron, but once we add our texture, it really changes the look and gives it that Pottery Barn patina finish. I took some black and gold paint and added a little flour to thicken that up. Then I dabbed this onto the pot, making sure there was three dimensional pieces sticking out because when it dries, it does tend to smooth out a little. So you definitely wanna go overboard with the paint texture here. I like how adding the texture makes it match the texture that we have on the handles too. I wanted to add the brush strokes that the Pottery Barn version had. So I used some gray chalk paint. And this chalk paint, it looks black when you first open it just because of the way the material settles in there. So I do have to stir this particular brand up and make sure it's all mixed up and then you can see it has that nice gray look. So I did a dry brush technique by using a dry brush which has somewhat stiff bristles and I picked up just a tiny bit of that chalk paint and dabbed it around the vase. You may want to do a little test on a piece of paper before going to the vase just to make sure you've got enough of that paint off to give it the look you want. I used a few varieties of greenery sprigs that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I stuck those in a piece of styrofoam and placed them in at the bottom of the vase. Here were the supplies we had to pick up at Dollar Tree and here is the comparison of mine to the Pottery Barn one. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked this video and I will link more dupes in the playlist below so that you can get more inspiration there. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a creative day. Bye!